Halo Infinite launched on December 8th. The game is out and we the players have had more than a month with the game. HCS Raleigh has debuted and showed a glimpse of the competitive scene that Halo can offer. However, literally no cap, time is running out for Halo Infinite. In today's time, multiplayer games battle and thrive under constant inspection from the gaming community. Halo is no exception to this. Criticism will always exist and community feedback is the biggest tool towards keeping a game alive and healthy. Looking at trends, Halo Infinite has been losing players, viewers, and opportunities with each day that the state of the game remains stagnant. In this video, I'm going to address the current problems I believe the game has, and how 343 can revitalize the community and offer more incentive for players to keep coming back to play Halo, with the hopes that this will prevent the game from dying. Listen, you don't like me and I sure as hell don't like you. But if we don't do something, Mr. Mohawk's gonna activate this ring. And with that, let's first address the gameplay and community which are key to making Halo successful. First, we must reflect socially at what keeps games alive. Viewers and consumers. Twitch is the powerhouse for developing game trends and is reflective of what is currently popular. Long-standing games have offered incentives for both the player and the viewer to have a good experience. This comes from engaging content like battle royales or competitive skill ceilings that allow players to see the peak of the game's capability. Looking at games like Fortnite, Warzone, Apex, Valorant, CSGO, Overwatch, League of Legends, and more gives us a better look at what helps games remain relevant. Many if not all of these titles involve quick turnaround with updates, new content, or highly competitive gameplay that keeps interest alive. Halo has accessibility for each of these and has a large pool of possibilities to remain relevant. I'm personally unaware of 343's capabilities in regards to community feedback and turnover time on updates, but botched releases in the past really discouraged me from being optimistic in this situation. Each of these require time, capital investment, and testing. The forefront problem being if the response time is too slow, players lose incentive to keep playing. This comes from having no reward for continually playing. Incentive to grind competitive titles lies in the personal investment to get better, and for many including myself, this is motivated through the hype that lies in the game's competitive scene. I realize this might not be true for all players, but functionally the competitive system for Halo must be addressed and defined in a more discreet way as opposed to the conflicting nature that permeates the gaming community now. Aim assist. But this, this is, it almost makes me laugh every single fight because I know how hard I'm fucking working for my kills. It feels like they're just fucking, they're dancing while they're fucking fracking me out. You're dead and I'm fucking sweating like I'm fucking like I'm lifting fucking weights trying to kill one guy trying to just fucking please don't please you know what I mean and they're just sitting there hey hey hot take or not aim assist has no place in a competitive setting currently halo offers cross input competitive play which means some players can play on controllers while others can opt for mouse and keyboard because of this HCS was almost entirely played with controller this is due to the fact that high ELO controller players can outgun PC players in most engagements. I recognize that PC has its advantages in regards to movement, however this isn't what I'm addressing. The topic that I'm addressing is if assisted input should exist at all in a competitive setting. And it should not. The byproduct of things like this resonate in the community and deter actual mouse and keyboard players from playing with their actual input. They would fundamentally lose to a controller player that has aim assist. And this dwindles down the player base for those that use mouse and keyboard and makes the experience much less enjoyable. So why does aim assist matter for the competitive scene? Aim assist matters because of the core community for the competitive scene wants the highest skill ceiling possible. This is not accessible with aim assist and it diminishes exciting gameplay that can occur in critical moments. You would not see highly competitive shooters like Overwatch, Valorant, or CSGO have the success they do if aim assist input was involved. It would remove the integrity from the match that distinguishes a winner. So 343, I would recommend making your tournaments mouse and keyboard only as it will increase the skill ceiling and offer more competitive games that are more engaging for the users and viewers. A more engaged community means more money for you and more players on the game. If the focus of Halo lies in controller only, I imagine that the game will have the same deployable nature that Halo 5 had, regardless if it's on PC or not. Consoles as a whole are transitioning to be more PC-like anyways. Take this opportunity to enter the esports community as a leader of competitive gameplay and team strategy. So with aim assist addressed in competitive settings, what about social settings? 
Aim assist is necessary for controller players to keep up with mouse and keyboard players. The problem is how strong should aim assist be? This is a question that I can't really answer, but what I can say though is that your community is your most valuable asset. Allowing them to understand the differences between inputs would give a better representation as to how to provide feedback. An easy way would be to show what input players are using in the scoreboard. This would allow players to submit feedback in contrast to what they have personally experienced. Then with enough feedback, adjust it. I personally feel like aim assist is slightly too strong. Four to five shots with a BR should not be common in social matches when a PC player's time to kill is closer to five or six shots. And again, that's just my opinion. Also, 343, you are worrying way too much over challenges and not spending enough time curating an enjoyable experience with playlists. Playlists should be updated weekly at a bare minimum to keep testing boundaries for what should be a permanent option for the community to play. With as many options as you have in the mode editor, not enough of them are actually being utilized. Meaning, the lack of playlist is absolutely horrendous. H here are a few options for what I think would be fun. Sword and grapple only, pistol only with a fast tactical reload, free for all with your friends, or free for all with BRs only, and duos should have definitely been a thing by now. There's dodgeballs with stickies, a playlist with just grapples and beat down like a ninja playlist, where the only way to kill is by back smack, hide and seek, camo for hiders, and grab hammer for hunters, you know, rocky race, king of the hill, VIP, you can have a mode with wasps only, ghosts only, you get the idea, right? Like, you, you get it, right? You're gonna tell me exactly what they're looking for, and then you're gonna help me stop them. Hire me now, like seriously, the possibilities are literally endless and you're utilizing none of it. Maps should be able to be vetoed. This provides feedback on how to make better maps and better game modes. Again, like what the fuck? I realize you guys poured tons of love into the maps that are already on the game, but you might as well kill the game now if you think continually forcing your community to do something they don't want to do is going to keep them playing. It makes no sense. I realize when Forge comes out you will have a better option for maps, but still the turnover time should not be so long for a game. Risking the franchise on a comeback is not how to be successful, and it's not something even Among Us could execute if they had voice chat and lobbies. Thank you dude, thank you. ARE YOU FUCKING PROUD, YOU BRAIN DEAD CAMEL DICK! And just for your the experience of Halo, region selection, all right? This should be customizable. It's 2021 in the midst of a pandemic. Many people are at home and more people are connected to the internet than ever before. Why am I still playing with Rostovic from Russia? I'm in America. 220 millisecond ping is not fun. I would rather wait five minutes for a match than be forced to play where I can actually not play. It's like buying a bag of salt and vinegar chips with no salt and all vinegar. Again, like what the hell? This is easy to do too. I've played nearly 200 hours of Valorant and I have less than maybe 10 matches with really high ping. And why? Because the game won't put me in a lobby where my connection is poor. The most notable problem with gameplay other than this is the melee system. Sometimes I beat the meat, sometimes I don't beat the meat. Why is this persisting in non-laggy matches? Weapon balances should be decided by a community as well as competitive settings. Let your community curate the experience they want to see and offer incentive by changing things up and testing playlists. And as a portion of big team battle, vehicles are way too weak in their current state. Vehicles are an integral part of big team battle gameplay, but you can't utilize it because there's so many means of disabling them. Dynamo nades, disruptors, shock rifle, rockets, grapples are instant hijacking. There are so many ways to disable vehicles, but no way to actually preserve the utility that you have in a vehicle. And where's the Gauss hog? As far as ranking is concerned, take the whole system and rework it. Most people should be gold and silver, not diamond one. Onyx should be reserved for the very best players, not your average Joe. And as well, you should add a tier gap for teams that, to where you can't just queue with an onyx and a silver player. This will prevent people from boosting accounts and will prevent new accounts from actually entering lobbies they shouldn't be in. And the means for the ranking should also be transparent with the community. Is it player performance? Is it wins or losses? Or is it damage output? How are players scored in matches? This needs to be addressed. And, and of course, anti-cheat needs to be a thing. Halo is just as susceptible as any other game when it comes to cheats. An anti-cheat needs to be implemented to prevent people from destroying the game's integrity and experience, as well as a quick reporting feature that allows players to be able to report a player that's cheating in the game. If I were to actually go out of my way and go to Halo Waypoint to report somebody, I would probably just close the game anyways. The UI is nice. I love the customization and the look of it, though there are glaring problems when the UI gets in front of players. Sometimes the objective overlaps the player and it prevents me from being able to see what the fuck I'm shooting at. 
In addition, I feel like custom crosshairs, a very simple version, should be implemented. For PC players, they don't have aim assist, so they don't know what the fuck they're shooting because it's in the very center of the crosshair, especially with weapons like the BR. It would allow PC players to have a better experience when it comes to tracking and getting better at the game. The theater mode right now in its current state needs to be repaired. The controls are very clunky and either a tutorial needs to be developed or it needs to be reworked. So with all those things out of the way, let's talk about how to help you make more money instead of me just bitching about the game. All right. The battle pass progression. Challenges are good, but the overall feel of progression feels demoralizing for a player that continues to play the game after challenges are complete. If a player plays more than six matches, the XP awarded is drastically reduced than if you only played three matches a day. This basically takes away the incentive to keep playing. Reverse it. Increase the XP required for a level and make the XP rewarded per match go up until a cap. Holy shit, mind blown. This will actually incentivize players to keep playing. Make weekly challenges harder and fewer and make daily challenges more prominent. You want to incentivize players to keep logging in and keep playing. That is the whole point. Keeping challenges out of rank, but able to be earned in rank. This is how you engage with your community. As far as the store, allow players to cu like purchase custom armor coatings. Let them build a bundle of colors and mats, and then let them purchase that as a one-time thing. And then they, if they want to change it, they make another bundle. There you go. You can set a price to that based on how it would be. And, and, and you know what? I'm just going to make a graphic so you can see what I mean. There. I, I put tons of effort into it. This is how you sell things to your fucking players. So f fuck, hire me. Like, and, and as regards to weapons, let players purchase custom weapons. Make them functionally the same, but let the base be different. Sell purple energy swords, gold energy swords. Let players grab hammers, have a confetti explosion. Make rockets shoot glue that sticks players onto a surface instead of launches them. Let players use old weapons as a model like the Halo 3 Sniper or the Halo 5 BR, but make them functionally the same, but different models. Like it will sell like crazy. As for armor, sell variations of the kill effects. Let people customize the color. Make the player's souls get ripped from the corpse. Better yet, hire me again. Allow players to purchase effects for their weapons and their armors. These are all things I'm sure you guys have at least thought about, right? So, like, let Sergeant Johnson be an AI. Let Rooster Teeth be AIs. Let Cortana be an AI. Sell custom outros for players. All of these are able to be done. Stop operating in simple boundaries and giving us a fucking color scheme that we don't like. You know, there's no incentive for it for a player. I get you're taking your holiday break, right? But, like, I'm not fucking joking. Your game is dying and HCS alone cannot save it. You need fast turnover time with these things. Take the capital, hire people, not just me, and make Halo something incredible by offering innovative gameplay and experiences. Halo has such a huge pool to, like, actually pull from. I can't emphasize this enough. Your community is your most valuable asset. You need to have quick turnover time with them and the feedback that they provide and make Halo the best thing that you can. And I know you're doing your best, and I know maybe my fucking voice isn't loud enough or permeates enough through the community to actually have an effect or maybe it does i don't fucking know but i can tell you one thing i love halo and i want to see this game stay alive for years to come anyways that's uh that's my two bits i guess i'll, I'll see you all on reddit hell or something fuck